Okay, in this part we are going to create the attack animation. So go to your uh, folder with all your animations and then we will have to locate the attack. And as we did before, select the first attack and select the last one. When you have selected them, you can simply take them and drag them into the scene. Delete the new one that you created. Delete the new controller. And take the attack and drag it to the animation folder. In here, we will rename the attack to attack. And there we have it. There we have our new attack um, attack um, animation. So select the player and now we'll have to add the attack, fun uh, attack animation to our animator as we did before. So we take the attack, pull it into our animator. And now we'll have to create some transitions. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, we can... Uh, we'll need to be able to transition to attack from run. So when we're running, we should uh, be able to click the attack button and he starts to attack. And when we are idling, he should also be able to attack. So if we right click on run, make transition to attack, right click on idle, make a transition to attack. And then there is something different here because we don't want to be able to run and attack at the same time. Because when we run, the attack animation is not made for running and attacking. He simply just stops moving his legs and then he um, he attacks. And it would be a little weird if we could just run and attack at the same time. Because then he would just slide on the ground uh, while he's attacking. So to prevent any weird movement, we will not be able to transition from attack back to run. We will have to go to the idle and then from the idle to the run, if anything, if we're still pressing the button. So, if we right click on make transition on attack, and then we put it back to idle, so then we will be able to go to attack from run, but we will not be able to run back to run here. We will go to idle, so we stand still, and then move to the run. Again, we will not need any automatic transitions here. So, click on the arrow, Remove has exit time, remove fixed duration, and set uh, transition duration to zero. And the same goes for the other ones, just at these fun uh, these um, values here on all of the transitions you just created. Okay, so now we will have to make a transition from idle to attack, or make a um, condition, and the same goes for run here. And the uh, transition condition that I have chosen is simply just a um, what's called a bool that can uh, be triggered. So, or uh, sorry, not even a bool, just a trigger. So we'll have to create a trigger. So, so um, the difference between a bool and a trigger is that a bool can be true or false. A trigger will simply just need to be triggered, and then it executes whatever is on the other side of the trigger. Um, so let's create a trigger. Click on the parameters and click on the little plus button here. And then you can see we have float, integer, bool, and trigger. So we have to select the last one here. So this is our trigger. And we can simply call it attack. That makes sense because it's going to trigger our attack. From our run, we can select our arrow between the two animations. Go to the list of conditions, click the plus, and then select the attack uh, trigger here. Then again, we will have to go to the transition from idle to attack. Click on the little arrow and we will have to select the condition again. Click the plus, click the attack and that's it. Okay, so actually um, we will need to have some exit time on our um, arrow back from attack towards idle. I just forgot about that. So um, we don't need to remove has exit time. Because we will simply need to go from attack to idle when he's done attacking. So we will not need to trigger anything. We will want it to do this by itself. So when the attack animation is done, we transition down to idle. So has exit time needs to be selected. And I think fixed duration can be set to those 0 0.25. We can always uh, change this if it looks weird. Um, yeah, so just keep on the has exit time at least so that it runs through the animation before it actually starts to go back to idle. 
So let's try to play this. If we play the game now, he's simply just standing and idling. If we click on the attack here, it's your trigger to attack and then jumps back as you can see. You can click it again and it triggers the attack animation and he throws out his attack here. Okay, as you can see, he is jumping to the left whenever he has, he's attacking and we would like him to attack on the spot that he's standing on. And the reason he's jumping to the left is because of the pivot point of um, the, the, the sprite. Because these animations here are not the same size, so the attack animation images are larger than the idle. So that's why he jumps a little to the left and up here. So we'll need to adjust this. So basically, while playing the game, don't stop playing it, because we'll want to test this out all the time when we adjust it. Go to the sprites. Go to the characters, select all the attacks, all the attack animations here. And then you can go to the pivot point here. So right now the pivot point is set as center. And the center of the sprite is not the same. The sprite is not the same size, so the center is, is not the same place. So select the pivot and then go all the way down to custom. And you can see here X is 0 0.3 and Y is 0 0.55. Um, we will have to adjust this so that it fits our needs. So basically we will have to change it a little. Let's say that um, our pivot here might be maybe 0 0.2. Let's try, see what happens. And we click apply. And then if we attack now, he's actually moving forward instead of backwards as you can see here. And that was a little too much, right? because he, he doesn't need to move forward when he attacks, he needs to stand on the spot. So maybe something in between 0 0.3 and 0 0.2. So instead of 0 0.2, then try 0 0.2, uh, 2, 2 maybe, apply. Let's try again. Yeah, now he's just turning his foot and attacking maybe a little less it's like you you can just adjust this until it, it suits your knees i'm gonna go with 0 0.23 i think 23 yeah that looks fine to me now he just leans a little forward but you can see he's always also moving a little downwards when he's leaning maybe we're not interested in that so we can also go to the attack animations here and adjust it to 0 0.50 instead apply See if that changes. Oh, now it goes more up, so that's the wrong direction. So it actually needs to go to 0 0.5, um, let's say 5.8. Now oh, it still goes a little down. So basically, yeah, keep adjusting this until it, uh, it fits 5.6. I'm just going to go with that. Still goes a little too much down, I think. Um, so maybe just five, five. Keep it at five, five. That actually look better. Let's see, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna keep it at the original one here. But again, just adjust this as as you want. You know what? Let's actually just try with. Um, 0 0.54. Sorry, I'm using a lot of time in this one. Um, just want to get it perfect. Let's see. I selected everything. Let's see. Yeah, that, that looks way better. So now he only leans a little forward. You can argue that the x axis might have to be adjusted a little so that it doesn't lean that much forward, but it actually just looks like he's turning around on this foot when he's attacking. So, yeah. I, I think that's a nice adjustment. So, just I just put all of them at. Um, minus two, like 0 0.23 and 0 0.554. But again, adjust this as you want it. So the next thing we'll have to do is to trigger this one from within our script. And to do that, we will have to add a new function called handle attacks because we already have handle movement and we'll have to make a private void handle attacks. And the reason that it's called attacks instead of just attack is because we are also going to have a jump attack later. And as I can see on the sprites, you'll also have a throwing knife or something. So you can always add that later if you want to. Okay. 
Um, we will have to add a new boolean to control if he's attacking or not. Um, so let's see here. Let's make a private pool called um, attack. Attacking. Nah, let's just call it attack. And we're going to save that. And inside handle attacks, if attack, well, then we need to say my animator dot set trigger. Because it's a trigger we're using. And then we need to give it the attack trigger. And save this. So now we have a handle attack function, but we are not um, triggering it in any way yet. So we'll have to add some more functionality to be able to trigger this one. So let's make an other function under here called private. Sorry, not in there, out here. Private void, it has no return type, and we are going to call the handle input. So this function is going to handle all our input for uh, attacking, jumping, and so on. So we are going to make an if statement that says if our input dot get key down. So when we press the key, key code dot uh, lift control, for example, or let's say shift, lift shift. So when we press the lift shift button, then we would like the player to attack. So what we are going to do here is to say attack equals true. So when we press the left shift, our attack boolean becomes true and a handle attack is going to be run. So my animator that set trigger attack. So that's how we are going to attack this one. So handle input is never called. We will need to call that in our um, update function instead of fixed update because we will not need to check this one in fixed update. We need to check it on every frame. So between start and fixed update, we write, oh my God, I didn't click, let's see here. We write void update. And inside update, we'll have to call handle input. So now our handle input is run on update, which means that handle input um, it will check or our code will check if we press the press the left shift button and if we do so well then attack is becoming true okay so let's see handle attacks also needs to be called at some point and we can do that after our handle movement so down here we can say let's actually do like this handle attack there we go so here's our handle attacks called so let's uh, try to run this game and see what happens. We'll have to add some small fixes, but let's see how it works. So right now, and I stand out here, I can click the lift shift button and it attacks. And as you can see, he keeps attacking over and over again. So we'll have to do something about that, of course. Um, but right now you can see that he can play the attack animation here. So why is it playing the attack animation? Well, first of all, we will have to go to the animations, click on the attack, and we'll have to remove the loop time from it at least. So let's try to remove the loop time. So find the uh, inside the animations, find the animation clip and remove the loop time on it. When you've done that, you can try to play it again and see what happens. Attacks, and he still jumps back from attack uh, idle into attack here. So there's still some more things we'll have to fix. And I actually think because the reason that he jumps from attack to idle all the time is because we never set our attack to false again. So if we jump back to our uh, script, that is, and we create a new function, let's go all the way to the bottom here, called private void reset values. This function here is in charge of resetting all our values. When we're done doing something, it will reset our jump, our attack, our slide, or our knife throw, and so on. So here we can say um, attack, I think I call it, yeah, equals false. So this is our reset values. Let's try to save this. Let's jump back to our update. Um, yeah, let's do it in fixed update. 
And when we're done attacking and everything, we just call reset values here. So now we always reset the values when we're done doing everything. So if we save this and jump back into our game and we try to attack, you'll see that he goes back into idle when he's done attacking here. But as you can see here, there's nothing stopping me from moving when I attack. As you can see, I can run to the left and run out running, I attack and then he keeps sliding and just throwing his sword right there. So we need to add some functionality so that he doesn't go from um, so that he doesn't go from attack um, or from run to attack here or at least we need to stop him from running when he's attacking so let's let's try to add that first so to do this we'll have to jump back into our script and we'll have to check if the animation or the attack animation is running before we move the character so inside the handle movement function we will have to make an if statement that says if our um, this dot my animator dot get current animator state info and this basically takes the animation state info and checks if the current animation is playing and here we have to take layer zero and say is tag attack okay so let's explain this we are taking the animator that sits on the player here. So we are, we are looking at this animator here. Inside this animator, we have something called layers. And as you can see, this is the base layer. We only have one layer. So we are getting the state of this animator and we are accessing layer zero. So that's why we say, well, my animator, we want the current state info, add layer zero. So this returns the current animation that is playing and if the tag on that animation is attack, well, then we, we um, if it's not attack because we have this uh, exclamation mark here, then we want to move the player here. So now we can't start moving the player when it's attacking. As you can see here, we have our attack. But as you can see, there is no tag on it. So we can just give it attack called attack here. So now our uh, animation clip called attack has a attack tag on it which means that we can check in our code if the current animators on layer 0 which is the base layer if that animation tag is attack isn't attack well then we can move our player okay let's try to save so right now we can't start moving when we're attacking if we stay on idle we can start moving left and right if I'm attacking, well, then nothing happens until I'm done attacking with moving, as you can see here. I cannot move until the attack is over. But if I run and I start attacking, he still slides, as you can see here. And that's because it still has some velocity on rigid body, and that rigid body velocity is never reset. So we have to reset the velocity whenever we attack. So let's figure out where to do that. Yeah, we can basically do that in our attack, handle attack here. After we have set the trigger attack, we can simply say my rigid body, my rigid body dot velocity equals vector two dot zero. There we go. So save this. Now we set the velocity to zero. So let's see what happens when we run. And we attack, boom, the character stops running. So now we cannot run while attacking. But there is one more thing we'll have to um, to adjust. As you can see here, we can, um, we can keep attacking. If we press the attack button, as you can see here, it, it kind of bugs out. Because now if I press the attack button more times, then I can actually manage to run while I'm attacking here, as you can see. And I can turn and do lots of other stuff. So we'll have to make sure that we don't start a new attack before the original attack is done. So we'll have to add that functionality. So basically we'll have to go to our script again. And in this if statement, we'll have to go up here in the handle movement, take this whole one that makes sure that we can't move while attacking and put it after the attack here. So say, and we're not attacking, uh, we're attacking. <clears throat> so now we can never start a attack before 
the original attack is done so we cannot start attacking while we are attacking so if we are supposed to attack and we are not attacking already then we set the trigger and stopped moving let's try to play the game and see if this helped out so if we spam the attack button well then we're not supposed to attack before we're done here so now I can't run and attack at the same time anymore because I just put that little if statement here as you can see so we can see if we run we start attacking, he idles and then he keeps running. I'm actually not sure if we would want to put an uh, transition from attack back to run if he's running. Um, no, let's just let's just keep it this, at this uh, to not not too complicated. So that's uh, the run animation, or sorry, that's the yeah run and attack animation. In the next part, we can add the slide animation so that when he's running we can click the slide key and he will slide on the ground as you can see here 